gives me opportunity opportunity to say welcome to Daryl Preston, Police and Crime Commissioner for Cambridge and Peterborough and thank you very much Daryl for joining us. I'm going to hand over to you now for your presentation on the Police and Crime Plan for Cambridge and Peterborough. Thank you. Uh, Elaine, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to lip read. Um, oh. I'm having some technical issues. So can you just confirm that you can hear me okay? Absolutely, we can hear you fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, apologies all, because um, unfortunately I, I was unable to use the policing network. It would seem that the policing network only trusts one online provider, so we, we've had to adapt and amend. Um, so firstly, many thanks for inviting me here today to speak to you, and good morning to everybody. A really good virtual turnout. Hopefully next year we'll all be back in person. Um, I've got 15 minutes or so. So what I wanted to do today was talk about the police and crime plan for Cambridge and Peterborough, which we recently launched. Uh, before I dive into that, though, I, I just want to um, give a very brief overview of the role of the Peace and Crime Commissioner. Uh, and it's fair to say that there is actually a review, a government led review on the role of police and crime commissioners nationally ongoing. Um, that, that review and some of the terms of reference around that is looking at uh, a, additional uh, powers of police and crime commissioners moving forward, which will probably cover the wider criminal justice system in, in local areas. Uh, so what does the PCC do? Well, well, firstly, this is in legislation, listen and act on the concerns of the residents. So this isn't about running the police, it's not about being the chief constable, it's listening and acting on the concerns of residents. Um, I'm responsible for the policing budget uh, in Cambridgeshire, that's currently around 165 million, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, I appoint, uh, and indeed can, can fire, the, the chief constable. Uh, importantly, I, I commission all the victim services uh, for the county, uh, and ultimately, of course, accountable to the electorate, reporting to the police and crime panel. Uh, but I must also take account of the strategic policing requirement and government priorities, which we will touch on shortly. But one of the, the key roles of a police and crime commissioner, indeed, is to set the police and crime plan. And that needs to be done within one year. Uh, we've managed to do it. We got it out uh, in November. So really pleased for that. And that, that was following a really wide consultation with residents, uh, business owners, uh, importantly, partner organisations, including sort of local councils, council parishioners, etc. Um, and, and I'm really pleased that we, we managed to bring this together, took it to the police and crime panel who uh, unanimously, unanimously endorsed it. And it was really building on some of those priorities I talked about, you know, during the sort of campaign time. Uh, and this was the first one, the big one for me is about more police officers, uh, putting communities first, fighting organised crime. And we just heard something around drugs there. And, and that, that's key when we come to fighting organised crime. Uh, better prevention, and we'll talk about that in a moment, and, and safer roads. So these all weave themselves into the plan. As I said, we, we, we had a wide consultation uh, and we found that we were about right in, in those priorities. So what we did for the plan, we, we kind of bunched these together into five key themes, uh, putting communities first, crime prevention, uh, supporting victims and witnesses, uh, ethical policing. Uh, and I'm really pleased we got that in. We got that in quite early, probably before you know, some of the, the, the national issues that we, we've seen recently, but a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, and then robust enforcement, you know, encouraging and, and supporting the police in using all the tools in the toolbox to ultimately keep us safe. So, looking at local priorities, we went out to survey, you'll, you'll see there, and we'll share these slides with you. Uh, each of the, the areas, uh, there's some common themes there, uh, uh, but there is obviously some local differences as well. Uh, but we, we see common themes around antisocial behaviour, drugs offences, um, yeah, some burglary uh, in, in Cambridge City, bike theft, for example, where we have those, those more local issues. But fairly common themes uh, across our, our county. And, and once again, although uh, speeding road safety uh, comes up time and time again, of course, 
this is all under the umbrella of, of some of that organized criminality, which actually manifests itself in some of those crime types that we see there. So putting communities first, uh, where am I in the plan? So the, the key for me is around more police officers. That's what people tell me they want. They want more police, they want to see them, and they want better access to the police. I mean, the good news in Cambridgeshire is that we do currently have around 1,650 police officers. That is record numbers. That's more than we've ever had uh, with the ambition uh, under the National Uplift Programme to have around 1,700 uh, by March 2023. Uh, and really much of the plan and much of my role in holding the Chief Constable to account is to ensure that those officers are recruited uh, and of course they're retained as well. The second big theme is around the contact, uh, 101 service, access to police. Uh, and I think there's a, a general view, and as a Chief Constable, I've had many conversations that we can do better. Uh, particularly, I get a lot, of, uh, a lot of residents come to me saying that the uh, waiting times are too long in relation to 101. I think the issue is more around the, the, the initial pickup is pretty good, uh, but then there's a triage and people are often left dangling around. So, there's some work ongoing, more people have been recruited into the 101 uh, demand hub, it's called, uh, and I'm, 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 we'll be holding the Chief to account to make some, some improvements as we move forward. Um, the, the other thing for me was supporting and funding our community uh, safety partnerships. So in legislation, each of the district and city councils will have a community safety partnership. Uh, and I'm really keen that, that, that well, they do some great work around the county, in particular there's high harm, high risk, crime types, county lines, uh, serious violence, uh, but also the, those local issues, those community issues. Um, so I'm putting some funding in there and, and a community fund behind it as well. So really quick access uh, to deal with some of those really local images, issues which may arise in our villages, towns, cities, and indeed our rural areas. Um, the, the other key bit for me, and I talked about my priorities, is around the, uh, the road safety, uh, supporting the the county-wide Vision Zero partnership, uh, reducing deaths uh, and serious injuries on our roads. Uh, you know, the reality is you know, around 40 deaths, I think, last year. That's just too many. It, it's just too many. And, um, you know, anybody who's been close to this or, or, or uh, known people involved in these sort of tragic events, you know, this is, this is life-changing and we need to be doing far more to make our roads safer. Uh, I am quite clear, though, that the number one Thing that will make our roads safer is for people to take you know responsibility uh, to drive within speed limits and to drive with, with, with due care and consideration. Um, tapping rural crime, this is very important. Uh, I'm really pleased to see new legislation has come in around hair coursing, which impacts our, our rural communities. I went out with our rural crime team recently. You know, it's right, we need to be doing more. This isn't just you know, minor crime, this isn't, this impacts our rural communities and can be very significant. And of course, business crime, fraud, cyber, thefts and assaults on shop workers. Uh, so this will mean uh, business forums. We're, we're doing a bit of work now with uh, a number of forums just to look at what we can be doing to support businesses, particularly around the fraud and cyber, uh, which is an increasing, increasing menace uh, to, to our businesses and individuals alike. So the, the second thing, crime prevention. Um, it, I'm mindful that, that the, the, original, um, the original priorities of policing, uh, when, when they were first brought, brought by Sir Robert Peel back in 1829, the success of policing is the absence of crime. So it's preventing crime from happening in the first place. And I'm, I'm really keen that that is, that is the top priority of partners, of agencies, and of policing. So part of this is, is we'll be creating a serious violence strategy, uh, tackling the, the blight of drugs and county lines. And there's now legislation in place to say each, each county must have this. Um, and the constabulary has recently adopted a prevention strategy. Now, th th this is really important because uh, you know, the, the, the police and enforcement, you know, arresting people, locking them up, taken before the criminal justice system. But as I said, and from my experience, and I, I am an ex-police officer, you know, it's most of the time, you know, the early intervention in particular will keep people out of the criminal justice system. 
And I've also talked about working with our, our community safety partnerships, looking at problem solving in local in localities. You know, as I mentioned before, for example, bike crime, how can we better prevent? Um, and as I've already mentioned, for me, a, a key focus is on that early intervention. It is just a sad fact that, that most crime is committed by a very small cohort uh, who often enter this, this life of crime at a very young age. And more often than not, the indicators are there. Social workers, police officers, teachers, local communities. You know, we, we know who, who the villains of tomorrow are likely to be. So let's get in early. It's good for the individual. It's good for that person. It, it, it's good for the wider community. We don't become victims of crime. And of course, it's good for the economy. It costs a fortune to put people through the criminal justice system. So we talked about supporting victims and witnesses. This is really important to me. In Cambridgeshire, we have our, our own services that, that, I, that I fund. Um, and, and most importantly, there's some real specialisms in there as well. Uh, specialisms around uh, domestic uh, violence and domestic abuse support uh, and independent sexual uh, violence advocates and advisors as well. So we, we currently are investing quite significantly in, in supporting uh, victims of both domestic abuse and, and sexual violence um, and also some work around perpetrators, which is quite innovative and exciting as well for me in that actually once more we're preventing because I don't want to be supporting victims and witnesses. I don't want victims. And that's the key point here. Uh, but also further investment in strategies to combat violence against women and girls. Now, be that domestic violence, child abuse, honour-based violence, and indeed stalking. And we've, uh, we're currently working with the nighttime economy. We, uh, we did an event in Cambridge. It was excellent to see our local businesses supporting this agenda as well. Uh, training to recognise some of those, uh, those initial issues of, of and traits of perpetrators so they can deal with them swiftly and robustly. Ethical policing, I, I talked about this briefly uh, earlier and it, it's really important for me. We, we have a, a young police force in service, we have a growing uh, police force. Um, but what we need to ensure is that they are the highest ethical standards. That's, that's, what, we, that's what we expect of our policing. Um, so, you know, this, this is investing within that area, within policing, to ensure that, that we have the very best standards, that we have the best vetting processes. Uh, and we've also recently started up an independent scrutiny panel around stop and search. I'm very keen that the police use their powers, all, all their powers, including stop and search. But of course, they must be done appropriately and proportionately. Uh, and the last theme is around robust enforcement. And, and for me, this is about holding the chief constable to account for cutting crime, getting crime down and ensure those who break the law are, are brought to justice swiftly. Uh, COVID has had its impact on this area as it has in practically every other area, particularly with Crown Court, those serious cases uh, and the delays. But we're working very hard to bring those down for the benefit of victims, witnesses and indeed, you know, th those, those defendants. Who, who will be waiting far too long as well. Um, you know, and increase and maintain police numbers to ensure that they get on with their job uh, and that the police are not just the emergency service of the last resort. So the police spend an awful lot of time dealing with uh, mental health issues uh, and, and as such. And, and that those are areas for me, uh, leading the, the, the wider criminal justice board in Cambridgeshire and Peterborough, to just ensure that uh, the partnerships are working effectively allowing the police to do the job that I think we all want them to be doing in the first place. But of course, we need to invest in tackling serious and organised crime, uh, county lines, you know, firearms dealing, child abuse uh, and organised rural crime, all of those things. A little bit about governance and, uh, and accountability. Um, part of the plan as well, as I said before, we've got to take account of the national policing requirements and at the moment, they are really focused on murder and homicide, reducing serious violence, uh, drug supply, neighbourhood crime. Now, neighbourhood crime is defined as burglary, robbery, uh, vehicle theft. And, and it's really key for me that we have really committed neighbourhood local policing. I know that's what our residents want. Uh, and as part of that, the, the Chief Constable is committed uh, to bolstering those neighbourhood policing teams. We are beginning to see more of those new officers who are coming in 
going into our neighborhood uh, teams, uh, delivering that, that localized policing expertise. There's also tackling cybercrime. Uh, this is now the most prolific crime type. You are more likely to be a victim of cybercrime, i.e. fraud, than any other crime type. Uh, and also this is about improving satisfaction, particularly among victims uh, and with a, a particular focus on domestic abuse. So I'll move on from that slide because I've read in mind. Uh, finance and resources. Um, so you know, this, this remains a priority. It's a government priority in relation to the uplift. Um, but what we find at the moment is that about 56% of the total funding for policing in Cambridge and Peterborough comes from government. The rest is from the precepts. So I'm just going to end on this, mindful of time, the precept uh, raised in council tax. So government ha has, has uh, ring fenced some of that money around these new recruits. Uh, but clearly uh, here in Cambridge and Peterborough, we, we're already pretty good on our numbers. Um, you know, I know that some say it doesn't feel like that, we don't see the police, etc. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we need to ensure that those police officers that we have are of the very best standard and that we retain them. Uh, so what I'm trying to do now is to look to support those, those number of police officers, uh, but also with a little bit of a, a additionality here as well. We're looking at more digital investigative support to target drugs and county lines. Uh, additional cyber investigators, because I already mentioned cyber crime is on the up, particularly, particularly harmful for businesses at the moment, but individual and individuals. Um, young person intervention, early intervention officers, I've said this a number of times, really important to me, so the Chief Constable has recognised this is an area that we can make a real impact uh, in, in cutting crime. Uh, and some increased investment in relation to violence uh, against women and girls. Uh, which is a key government priority and it's a key priority for, for the constabulary and myself. But of course, that, that's set aside where we do have inflation and we will have pay rises within policing as well. So um, on that slide there, and I'd, I'd be really grateful for, for your help in sharing that with, with your contacts. There is a survey which is currently open in relation to precept, seeking the views of the, the residents, uh, the great residents of our, our county on, on what they think uh, policing should look like and what they, they, they would be prepared or not to spend. And at the moment, the government are recommending a, a £10 increase in relation to uh, the average band D over a year. It works out at 83 pence a month. That's what I'm asking for, but really keen to seek views on that. So I think with my 20 minutes just about up, um, that was a, a, a whiz through of the police and crime plan. It, it's on the website, it's there online, or, or ring us up if you want, if you want a hard copy. Um, my, my ambition is really clear, and it's been the same since the, the, the very start. Uh, my, my, my ambition here, uh, without my term and, and working with partners, is to keep all of our communities, whether they be in our cities, towns, villages, or rural areas, as safe as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. That's really great. I don't know if you can hear me, but actually everybody else should be able to hear me. So thank you very much indeed for your time today and for sharing with us your presentation. Um, I would just encourage you all to take part in that survey and we will send the link round to you all. All of the presentations today will become available to you at the end of the conference as part of the resources available. You'll also be able to access all of this conference for up to 30 days at the end of, of when we finish today. It will be available on demand for everybody who has registered. You'll be able to come back into the same link and either re-watch these exciting videos or you'll be able to certainly download the presentations and have a look at the resources. We're about to head off for a five minute break now. So can I suggest that you all make really good use of the marketplace information stalls that we have available for you today. There's 10 different stalls, all particularly relevant to local councils. And there's officers there who are, who are waiting to take any of your questions. There's also a lot of materials and information that you can just click into or download or have a look at. Uh, we'll see you back in the main hall at 11.25 when we're going to run through with you very touch on very briefly about the local council development plan and share with you the feedback from the 2021 clerks and chairs survey. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Commissioner. We're going to see the Commissioner later on at the um, 
panel hopefully will have he'll be able to hear us then because that's kind of key when it's a discussion panel but thank you all for very very much for bearing with us and i'll see you back here at 11 25 thank you <laughs>